So here's a quiz I'd like to give you. What I've provided is the Q code that we've already seen, and also three test functions. The first test function is one that I wrote, and let's just go through it really quickly. So it creates a three element Q, checks that it's empty, that is to say, it calls the empty method, and if it's not empty, that is to say, if the empty method doesn't return true, we print test one not okay and return. Otherwise, we keep going. So we in Q a 10, make sure that that succeeds. In Q the value 11, make sure that that succeeds. Call the DQ method, which takes the first thing out of the Q that we put in, which is 10. So we make sure that it's 10. DQ the next element, make sure that it's 11. And now we check again that the Q is empty. If all of these are, are true, then we print test one okay. So that's my test function. Your test functions are test two and three. So let's just make sure that everything works here. We'll run the code and we see that test one okay, test two okay, and test three okay. So your assignment is to write functions test two and test three. So just a little bit previously, I gave some examples of several different tests for the queue that were equivalent to each other, in the sense that if we ran one of them, then it was just about as good as running the other one. So if you remember, for example, we can enqueue some numbers and dequeue them and check that they are correct. The queue code would behave exactly the same if we did those same exact operations but with sleeps in between them. So what you're going to do here is the opposite of what I was showing. What I want you to do is write test functions two and three so that they're not testing equivalent functionality in the queue. This, sh this should be pretty easy, but let me just go up and look at the code and we'll get some ideas about how that might work. So what kind of behaviors in the code could you trigger that I didn't trigger? Well, that's pretty obvious. For example, I never triggered the full case for in queue. I never triggered the wraparound case. I never triggered the empty case for DQ, nor did I trigger the wraparound case for the head pointer. So given those ideas, write functions test two and test three such that they are not testing equivalent queue functionality as the test one function that I wrote.